us. We're so happy to have them. We have a couple from Arkansas. You must have heard a lot about us. They came all the way down here to see us. We're so happy to have them. And if you're visiting with us, you're an honored guest. I'm going to ask you please to turn off. Don't put them on silence. Just turn the cell phone off, please, so we can have this time together. Come on, hold you long. I want to talk about the scripture that we read in our hearing. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 10. He says, neither murmur you, as some of them also murmur, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Don't you get tired of people grumbling all the time? Yes. Yes. They're never happy with anything. If they want $10 and you give them $10, they say, well, why didn't you give me 20 <laughs> Right. People are always murmuring and complaining, and they were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, all of these things happened unto them for an example, and, and to, you were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world has come. All of that stuff was written so we can understand. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, let him that think he stands take heed lest he falls. There had no temptation taken you as such as come to the man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation, also make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee idolatry. Isn't it good that God is faithful? Yeah. We serve a faithful and loving God. Amen. And I'm so glad we do. Yeah. And so I want you to understand today, today I simply want to talk about a way of escape. All right. God gives us a way of escape. We might have to look for it. We might have to find it, but it's there. Yeah. And God is faithful not to allow us to suffer more than we are able to bear. Yeah. You know, a brother and a sister called me down there to this place where you go into this room and you have to figure your way out of that room. It's called an escape room. Mm -hmm. And you have these clues, and by the time, by the end of the hour, you hope to be ex get out of that room. It's called an escape room. <laughs> well, I never could get out of that room. <laughs> but that's the way it is now. We have these things called escape, but, but God is faithful to us because we're gonna go through some ups and downs. And God is faithful that we go through these things because you know what? We're gonna have some trials that are coming. You keep living, it's coming. Maybe it might be the loss of a loved one, or it might be a traumatic accident, or it might be the loss of a job. What do you do when you lose a job? Who do you depend on? What do you do when you lose a loved one? Who do you depend on? You just don't run away from God. You can't do it by yourself out there. We're so happy that you can know that we can always trust in God. Yeah, because if it wasn't for God, you and I, we couldn't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My sister Coach lost her brother Jerry lost. We all lost loved ones in here. Yes. But it's because of God <laughs> that we can make it. Amen. And I just want you to know there's going to be some trials and tribulations coming. It happens in all our lives. And this is what James says. James is my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect. What makes us perfect? These trials and tribulations. That's what perfects us. That's how you're going to know if you're going to stand or not. You ever had somebody say, well, I'm with you all the way, and then you turn around and they were gone. Mm -hmm. That's why we know if we're perfected, these trials and tribulations. You know what even happened with Jesus? In Hebrews 5, verse 8, Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience. The things which he suffered, being made perfect, yes, he became the author of eternal salvation to them that obey him. Through the suffering and the obedience, made him perfect. Mm -hmm. Same thing with us, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go through some ups and downs. That's what's going to make. So God makes a way of escape. But the fact of the matter is, there's going to be some trouble in this life. Yeah. And Mark 10, 29, he says, And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, There is no man, <clears throat> I want to emphasize, no man, no man that has left house, a brother, a sister, a father, a mother, a wife, a children, a man, for my sake, mm -hmm. and the gospels. But he shall receive hundredfold now in this time houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, and children and lands with what? Persecution. We're going to have some persecution. There's going to be some persecution in our lives.
But I'm telling you, it's so good to have peace, isn't it? Amen. We have the peace that surpasses, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in this world. We're praying that there's no war, that the United States is not going to be in this war. We're praying for COVID, that COVID just dissipates. We can pray for all these things, but it's good to have peace, and joy, and love because you're in Christ. Amen. There's going to be some tribulations, there's going to be some tr tr trepidation, trepidation, but we got to stay with the Lord. And so I'm trying to figure out, as I'm sure you're waiting for me to get to the point, <laughs> what ways is there to escape? That was my dilemma this week. How do God provides a way? And I'm trying to figure out, what way is that, Brother Dan? Well, the first thing I came up with is just turn your head. You look at something, you shouldn't look at it? Turn your head. You know, television, turn your head. Sometimes things on, compu on the computer, turn your head. Somebody walk across there, turn your head. You got to learn. Sometimes we just got to turn our head. That's a way of escape. You don't have to look at it. Somebody said, well, look at not going to hurt. You know, this young man, he was very hungry. And he walked, he found himself in front of this, in front of this, uh, this vegetable stand. And he was standing there looking at that apple. And the owner came over and he said, you're not thinking about stealing my apples, are you? And he said, no, I'm trying not to, I'm thinking about not stealing it. He has to turn his head. Because the longer he's standing there looking at that apple, that's what we got to learn to do. We got to learn to turn our head. That's because you say, well, you can look and no touch. You keep looking. <laughs> you keep looking and you're going to find out what's happening. I'm asking you today to find that way of escape. You might not know where it is, but one way is to just turn your head. For example, it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, wherefore let him that think he stand, take heed lest he fall. You know, if you got a problem with potato chips, you don't bring them home. <laughs> you leave them in the store. If you got a problem with alcohol, you don't bring it home. You know, if the Bible say, he that take, think he stand, take heed lest he fall. You don't put yourself in situations where you know you got problems and you could fall. Or oh, strong preacher, I can do it. If you hanging around with a co-worker and you're getting attracted to that co-worker, it's time for you to find another job. Mm -hmm. If you're watching something on, on, on the computer and it's, and, it, and it's doing things that it shouldn't be doing, it's time for you to turn that computer off. And you don't need internet. You can turn the internet off. You don't need a television. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What I'm trying to tell us, is that we got to learn to turn our head. You know, in Proverbs 23, verse 31, do not look on the wine when it's red and when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smooth, and at last it bites like a serpent and it stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. You think it's all right to just keep looking at it? And he said, you look at it while it's in the cup. And it's going to bite you like a serpent. What I'm saying is that we're going to have to find that way of escape. God is, 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 is faithful and will now allow us, allow us to be tempted more than we're able to. But with the, but with the temptation, provide a way of escape. Turn your head. Brother Wish, at Matthew 5, 28. Matthew 5, 28. What does he tell us to do if our eyes just can't stop looking? Your eyes just can't stop looking. And in Matthew 5, 28, what does he say? But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman, to lust after her, mm -hmm. hath committed adultery with her already in now, heart. Now you're lusting after her. It's not just simply looking at somebody, but it's looking with the intent. And the thoughts are coming in your mind about these things. What did he tell you to do, brother? If thou right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now, he's not telling you to literally take your eye. But he's telling you to turn your head. Because sometimes you just got to learn to turn your head. He said he'd take, take it out, plug it out, and what? Cast it from you. Don't, you don't take it out and hold it. <laughs> you take it out and throw that thing away from you. you have, we have to do whatever it takes to make it into heaven. What else, brother? For it is profitable to me that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Okay. 
And if by a great hand of his knee. Now, what does that mean? You're touching something you shouldn't touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does he say do with that right hand, brother? Cut it off. Does he mean literally cut off your head? Mm -hmm. He means you run as far as you can run. You turn your head. And I'll tell you, it's such a simple, it's such a simple thought. It's just like that young man looking at that apple. He wants to steal that apple so bad, but he's trying not to steal it. Mm -hmm. But the longer as he stands there and look at it, the more he's gonna be tempted to steal it. Right. And I'm saying today, what we got to learn is that we're gonna go through temptations. That's the way we're tried and tested. But God makes a way of escape. And the first way is just turn your head. You don't have to look at it. What else, brother? For it is profitable to be that one of our members should perish, but not that the whole body should be cast into hell. It's trying not to go to hell, brother. I'm trying not to. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs, brother. Proverbs 5 7. Proverbs 5 7. What does he say there, brother? Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, mm -hmm. and depart not from the word of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Remove thy way far from her. And come not nigh the door of her house. He said, don't go down her street. <laughs> <laughs> you can go home another way. Yeah. The devil uses all these things to try to throw us. Yeah. The devil uses people that are closest to us to try to throw us. Yeah. And he's trying to tell the, the, the Solomon's trying to tell this young man, you don't need to go home that way. Right. Well, I just happened to see it on my way home, brother. Oh, you gotta try to find another way to go. And uh the Bible tells me in 2 Samuel 11 and verse 2. You remember David went up on the house rooftop? What, sh what should he have done? Turn his head? <laughs> and in 2 Samuel 11 2. And it came to pass that in evening time that David arose up off his bed and he walked up on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look at. Uh, you know what he did? He kept looking. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that God makes a way of escape for us. We just got to learn to take it. All we got to do is just turn our head. Just turn your head. You remember Eve, right? In Genesis 3, 6. And the woman saw that the tree was good before. Well, wait a minute. What about all those other trees that were out there? Out of all of these trees you can eat, but that that one tree you couldn't eat of. But she saw this tree, and it was good for food. Good for food. She didn't turn her head. Nope. And that's what I'm asking you today to tell you that it's a way of escape. We just got to learn to be able to get it. And Proverbs 6.27, brother. Proverbs 6.27. Does he, does he say that? Can a man take fire in his bosom yeah. and his cold yeah. not yeah. burn? Yeah. For one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned. You know what we say? If you play with fire, you get burned. Why is it that the, the, the young people can't understand that? They think they're strong. Older people, we got, we got a little, little sense. Just a little bit. <laughs> but, the, but the younger people think, oh, I can do it. I can play with, I can play with fire. I won't get burned. I, I won't even smell like smoke. Yeah. You keep playing around, Satan's going to get you. And what I'm trying to say is that we got to learn just to let it go, turn our head. And then Romans 13 and verse 14, what does it say that, brother? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know, we, we go to these parties with our job and make a provision. You know, when they start moving the tables and the chairs, it's time for you to go. You know, we go, we hang out with people and, and we, we're trying to convince our friends to be Christians, but our friends sometimes have more influence on us than we have on them. Yeah. Make no provision for the flesh. Just don't even take, don't even take, don't even take a chance at it. Because we're trying to make it to heaven. What I'm trying to tell you is that God said there are going to be temptations. There are going to be trials and tribulations in our lives. We can't help that, but he will provide a way of escape if we just look for it. And the first way we're going to look for it is just to stop looking at it. Just stop looking at it. Turn your head. And James 1, 13, he says, now don't blame God. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, nor tempt he any man. 
But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of what? His oh, own. Oh, it's oh, your oh, own oh, lust. Oh, Not that it's, it's something inside of you that you want. Oh, and you have to learn to get rid of it. God, I give up everything but just one little thing. I just can't give up. That's a problem. You, when you're drawn away with your own lust and enticed. You know, this is an illustration of a, a fishing lure. You throw it out there and you start fishing. Sister Janice, I went and caught some fish the other day, but I didn't have a lure. Right. But you throw that lure out there and you start bringing it. And after a while, that fish just don't want it. That's what devil does with us. He, he entices us with stuff. He put things in front of us. He knows our weaknesses. You know how? We've shown it to him. We've shown him what we like and what we don't like. And if he'll put those things in front of us, and we got to learn not to strike at it, because we're drawn away with our own lust. It says, then when lust has conceived and it brings forth sin, sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. If you do it, it's going to cause you to go to hell. I'm asking us today to look for that way of escape. You might not see it. You might not know where it is. But God provides it in one way. It's just to turn your head. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll grow up if you turn your head. Not only that, you got to flee. Sometimes you got to run. <laughs> Brother, if you got to run, you got to run. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it with for my dearly beloved flee idolatry. You just got to run, brother. You just got to get away from it. You got to run. You have to run. Remember Joseph in Genesis 39 11? In Genesis 39 11, Joseph was a dreamer. And Joseph told his family that everybody, everybody in my family is going to be bound down to me. So his brothers, they hated him. So his brothers sold him into slavery. And his brothers got, when he sold him into slavery, he wound up at Potiphar's house. And Potiphar's wife took a shine to him. And she wanted him so bad, she wanted to lie with him. And in Genesis 39, verse 11, what did he say, brother? And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. Mm -hmm. And there was none of the men of the house there within. Now, you think she had to arrange all the men to be out of the house? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got you to think she's been after him day by day by day. He keeps saying, no, no, no. All of a sudden, he comes in the house, and none of the, nobody's there but her and him. And what happened, brother? And she caught him by his garment mm -hmm. and said, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled. He had to run. Sometimes you got to run, brother. <laughs> if you got to run, you got to run. Yeah, Sister, sometimes you got to run. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, God, find, make a way of escape, and we're going to have to take it. He provides it, but you got to do it. Because the devil is out to get every one of us, and he doesn't want us in here. He doesn't want us here in the gospel. And what happened, brother? And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house mm -hmm. and spake unto him, saying, See, he has brought in an Hebrew mm -hmm. unto us to mock us. Mm -hmm. He came in unto me to lie with me. Now, see, she lying through her teeth. Lying through her teeth. And that's what I'm trying to tell you sometimes you just got to flee. Brother Williams, in 1 Corinthians 6 18, I, I'll get this. 1 Corinthians 6 18, it says, Flee fornication. Yes, right. mm -hmm. Every sin that a man does is without the body, right. but he that committed fornication sinning against his own body. You know who you hurt? You hurt yourself. You say, Well, I don't feel like I'm hurting myself, but you are hurting yourself. Yeah. You are going to have to flee. The Bible said, Flee. We're going to have to run. You know what he said in 1 Corinthians 4, 10, 14? Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee idolatry. You know what he said in 2 Timothy 2, 22? Flee also youthful, youthful lust. You know, sometimes because you're young, you have these things going on, but you got to, you got to, you got to watch it. The Bible says also in 1 Timothy 6, 10, brother. 1 Timothy 6, 10. What does he say there? For the love of money is the root of all evil, uh -huh. which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Uh huh. But thou, old man of God, flee these things. You you got to flee the love of money. Mm -hmm. Some people 
to anything for money. And you got the feel of love. You know what? You're going to leave it right here. All of those stuff you have, you're going to leave it here. You're not going to take it with you. You might have a U-Haul all you want. But it's not gonna, it's gonna not gonna make it. Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. Any of that stuff you have, we cannot take it with us. I'm trying to tell you, we got to flee the love of money. That's what makes us fall a lot of time, trying to get some money. That's one of the devil's biggest temptations. Trying to, you know, people taking have taken jobs on Sunday because they will need a little extra money, walk out from the Lord. People take a job away in another town where there aren't even faithful congregations. Walk out from the Lord. That's one of the devil's tricks is to give you a little money. You know, the one guy was he got on the bus and, and he and he was the new preacher there in town and he gave the bus driver some money and the bus driver gave him a nickel back two months. And he's debating in his mind, he's like, well, it's just a nickel. Yeah. You know, uh, he's nobody's gonna notice him. And then at the end he gave the nickel back to the bus driver. Yeah. And he told the bus driver, you know. I'm the new preacher in town. He said, I know you are. That's why I gave you that extra nickel. <laughs> <laughs> see, we, see, we'll sell our soul for the least little thing. A little bit, a little something, a, a, a little increase on our job. But this, I'm trying to tell you, you got to flee. Free things. Some things you just got to run from. And Proverbs 9.17, stolen waters are sweet. And the bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he, but he knoweth that the dead are there and uh, that her guests are in the depths of hell. You might think you're getting away with something, but you're not getting away with it. God knows about it. You're going to wind up in the depths of hell. Well, stolen waters are sweet. Yeah, these ain't sweet, but it's going to wind up being bitter. What I'm saying is there's a way of escape. We got to use it. All right. We got to learn to turn our head. We got to learn to flee certain things. That's just the way it is. Bible is clear in Isaiah 29 15. Isaiah 29 15. Woe unto them that seek deep, seek deep in the, and, and hide in their counsel from the Lord. But their works are in, in the dark, and they that, they that say, Who seeth us and who knoweth us? You know who see? God. You out, in the, you out in the middle of the night doing things you shouldn't do? God sees you. Amen. You think the dark hides you? It doesn't hide you. Amen. What I'm trying to tell us is that we got to take this way of escape. But ultimately, the only way you and I can escape is Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, this world's not going to be fair, right? There's always going to be some trouble in this world. There's always going to be jobs that you, maybe you should have been gotten or some things that happen to you that's not right. Or, so it's all... It's, this world is not fair, but one person that makes it all fair is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only way we can really escape. Amen. All of these things I'm telling you are temporary, but there's one thing that's eternal. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible is clear. In Genesis 39, verse 2, you know what he said with Joseph? Joseph was in that terrible situation, and he said, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was prosperous, a prosperous man, and he was in the house of the master of the Egyptians. He went through it, but God was with him. You know what he said in Genesis 39, verse 3? And the master saw that the Lord was with him. You know what he said in Genesis 39, 21? And the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. You know what he said in Genesis 39, 23? Because the Lord was with him. No matter what you go through, God is still with you. Oh, it's going to be some trouble. It's going to be some hard times. But God is with us. That's the only way we're going to be able to make it. You know it's gonna be. You know there are problems all the time. God was with Joseph. Joseph was cast into prison. He was falsely accused. He was hated by his brothers and sisters. He, he was, his family uh, threw him. His family thought that he was gone forever. But God was still with him. Yeah, you know what happened in Second Samuel eighteen verse twelve? Who was with David? And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. The Bible is clear over and over again. Joshua 6.27. And the Lord was with Joshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Judges 1.19. The Lord was with Judah. God is with us. Oh, That's a wonderful thing. I'm telling you. It's a wonderful thing that no matter what we go through, we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh, yeah. It's all great that God's going to be with us no matter what. Through the ups and through the downs. What about us? The Bible says the Lord is our shepherd. Amen. He said, I shall not walk. He 
<laughs> making me to lie down in green pastures. Yeah. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the past of righteousness. Yeah. 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 Who is going with us? God is going with us. Oh, yeah. The only way we're going to be able to escape, the only way we're going to take the way of escape is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. Right. I'm asking you to get on board today. I'm asking you to come down this aisle. Hey. Give me your hand, give Christ your heart. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I know He died for you. Amen. I know He died for me. Amen. And that's the only way we're going to be able to make it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. You know that rod, the shepherd has a rod. Yeah. And the shepherd has a staff. And he walks around there. And if the wolf comes, you know what the shepherd does with that staff? And if the bear comes, you know what the shepherd does with that staff? You know, David said one time that a, a wolf came. He grabbed that wolf and he killed him. And the bear came. And he grabbed that bear and tore him to smithereens. Yeah. That's what Jesus does for us. That rock and that staff come. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, enemies, we have enemies on all sides, but God still takes care of us. We eat, we sleep, we, we lay down at night, we can still have peace because God prepares a table before me in the presence of my head. You know what he says? He says, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. What does the idea of your cup running over give you? Blessings after blessings after blessings after blessings, you can't get enough. The, 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 the cup stays full. You know why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. He goes on to say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me some of the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm asking you to take away of escape today. I'm telling you, sometimes what you got to do is you just got to turn your head. Because trials are coming. Trials on each hand, trials on your side, trials. There's going to be some trials and tribulations. They're coming. You just keep living. Don't let the devil come in here and separate us. We got to learn how to let things roll off our back. If somebody offends you, just go to them and say, You offended me. You know what they'll say? They'll say, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry, sister. That's what they'll do. They won't run out of here and get mad. You know why? Because we know there's some trials and tribulations. We're all trying to make it there. And that's just the way it's going to be. But don't let the devil throw a mocking wrench in anything. Because right. he's going to try to separate us all. But when that trial and tribulations come, you know what you do? Just turn your head. Some things you don't need to look at. Somebody brings something up, Brother Jackson, I don't know it's true, but I, I know if you don't know it's true, don't tell me anything. I don't even want to hear it. Well, I'm going to tell you about such and so and so. Uh, if you're going to tell me about a sister, you get that sister, you bring up, and both of y'all talk to me. If you're going to tell me about a brother, you're going to get that brother. No, I don't want to hear half of a story. The one guy came and he said, well, my wife this and my wife that. I said, brother, I don't want to talk to you unless you have your wife. Amen. And then when he got a wife, and she said, you know you've been cheating me? I said, brother, you ain't tell me all of that. <laughs> That's what they do. They try to get in between us. And we can't take one side of any story. What we need to do is... If we're going to solve this problem, we're going to put both of them together. That's what, we're not going to let anybody come in here and separate us. Because there's going to be some trial and tribulation. But you know what you do? You just turn your head. When, 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 when times get hard, you know, sometimes you just got to run. You got to take yourself out of that situation. We're going to flee. But ultimately, the only way we can escape is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth. Be like, no man coming to the Father but by me. The, there is no other way to God. The only way we can go is through Jesus Christ. John the Baptist came, and he made the way straight for Jesus Christ. He made the way straight. You know, when kings and presidents, like the president, uh, the president was going to come to Fort Lauderdale, they'll send some forerunners in front of him. They'll make sure there's no bugs and no bombs. and they'll, they'll make sure. The president just doesn't show up. Here we have Jesus Christ showing up. King of King and Lord of Lord. There had to be somebody going in front of him. It was John yeah, the Baptist. Yeah. But he wasn't checking for bug, bugs, and he wasn't making sure hotel rooms were. He was checking men's hearts. He was preparing men's hearts right. to accept the gospel. I want to know today when you come down this aisle, yes. give me a hand, give Christ your heart. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is.
died for me, and I know that he got up on the third day. Yeah. And I know that if I become a Christian, God's going to make a way of escape. He's always going to look out for me. It might not look that way, but he always does. Yeah. I want to know the day when you accept that. Would you be willing to hear his word? All right. Romans 10, 17. And would you be willing to believe what he said? Hebrews 11, 6. And would you be willing to repent? Luke 13, 3. I tell you, next, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Would you be willing to confess with the mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I'll ask you one question. Do you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you say yes, then we'll be willing to baptize you. Mark 16, 16. You that believe it and baptize shall be saved. And then you don't have to worry about anything because God will be with you. I'm not saying you won't ever make a mistake. I'm not saying that he's going to make times easy for you. I'm not saying you're going to have everything you ever wanted. But you'll have Jesus Christ. Yeah, and as long as you have Christ, you'll be able to make it. Amen. And that's what God does. He just goes through the valley of the shadow of death with us. He doesn't make it easy. But with the temptation, he prepares a way of us. I want to know that would you accept that? Would you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And if you're a Christian, you haven't been living right, what else are you trusting in? What else can you trust in? You said, well, my doctor is a pretty good doctor, but he's still human. You said, well, I'm my teacher. My teacher's going to take me into higher heights. He's still human. Only one person you can trust in, that's Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, you're going to have some ups and downs. You see Christianity today. They say if you become a Christian, you're going to have all the money you ever wanted. You're going to be prosperous beyond. No, that's not the way it is. The, the, the fact of the matter is we're going to have some trouble and some trials and temptations. But Jesus Christ is going wrong with us all the way. That's the truth. Be willing to accept that. Because God has been too good for us. You hear his word, believe what he says, repent, confess, and be baptized. I will add you to the body of Christ. Are you looking for a way of escape today? If so, let that be known. Together we stand the same. The song of the have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power?